Hey all, and welcome back, and it's finally that time. It's that time to take these wheels and fit them onto this car. So if you aren't familiar, I had won a set of wheels from Koenig. I did a video about it last season, but before I put the wheels on, like everything else with all tracks, nothing is simple. So the first step is I'm going to clean them, then I'm going to go over it with a sealant, then we're going to see what kind of spacer situation we need, studs, etc. get it balanced, mounted, and on the car. So we'll go step by step. First thing we do, let's go ahead and get it cleaned. All right, so we've got the brand new wheel here. And like I said, it looks clean, but I wanna make sure there's no residue on it. So we're gonna use this wheel, like I said, and then we've got the bead maker here. And so first you apply the McGuire's, let it soak for a little bit and you pressure it off, um, dry it off. And then after everything's pretty dry, I might not even do it today, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll put the bead maker on and polish it into it. So we've got the first couple here cleaned and what I'm doing, I'm coming back with a terry cloth and making sure there's no water spots left on them because I don't want any residue when I put the coating on. That way it better protects the wheel. So with the entire wheel clean, the next process is going to be add bead maker. And what this is going to do, this is going to put a slick coat on the entire wheel and make it a little bit more difficult for things like brake dust and dirt and debris from sticking to it. And that way I can just easily rinse it off and keep the wheels clean without having to do all this excessive work polishing and getting in the crevices and whatnot. This is just gonna make my life easier in the long term and protect the wheels. And here are two wheels. The one on the left has been treated and the one on the right has not yet. And there's not a huge visual difference between the two, but the one on the left feels much slicker and that's the whole point is so things just slide off of it rather than getting embedded in the paint or st sticking to it. So the wheels have had a few days to dry. And what I have now is we have ASAP Tire. They've come out and they're actually gonna mount and balance my wheels from their van. So let's go ahead and check out their rig. This keeps me from having to drive the car out, deal with appointments, all that stuff. They come to the house, they mount it, get everything ready. Typically they would put it on the car, but I'm not ready to put them on the car yet because I still need to do alignment and a few other things before we can get these wheels mounted. Well, as some of you know, I am notorious for weighing things. I'm pretty obsessed with trying to find out how to save weight on this car. Uh, one thing I've already done is I have knocked off 12 pounds per side with my big brake kit that has reduced quite a bit on spring weight. But the new wheel versus old wheel, same tire size, same wheel size, just different way of manufacturing. Here is the new weights. The Koenig is 42 pounds and 15.6 ounces with tire and the Sport Max is 45 pounds and 12.6 ounces. So it's nice to be able to keep that tire size to lose some weight and only be a couple pounds heavier than my old 17 by seven 215 tire size, which of course was a heavy wheel, but this is gonna be much better when I'm out there racing. So I did a test fit to confirm if I'm going to need to do my extended lugs or not. And as you can see with the five mil spacer, which is I needed for tire clearance on the inner wall, there's just not enough thread engagement. So that means it's time to take the brakes off, remove the old studs, and then install the APR studs. I have some special tools for that, so we'll sort of take you through the process. So I used a few tools to get this out. I used a punch to push out the stud, and there's actually a spot back there where everything just pushes out precisely. And you can just reach around, and there is the original stud. My goal was to not damage it, so I want to make sure I only put any uh impact there for risk of damaging the threads because i might use these again some way someday down the road and to see how much longer they are there is the factory stud with the new apr stud so it adds a decent bit of length i did buy a tool that i was going to maybe cut these down however the amount of thread i need i don't think i'm going to need to i think i'm just going to leave them as as is for now and if down the road I feel like I need to cut them, I will. But for now, I'm just going to put them in as full length. So I'm going to try this kit out here. And what this is for is actually to get the stud installed uh, without having to ruin any sockets or any other tools. Uh, it's got a little set of washers here to help things move. 
and then it's got a hole through the end so the stud can go through. So I'm gonna use this to install the new stud. So now I can install the studs. There's a groove back here where you actually slide it in. And this is the new APR stud. And what this tool is, it's got a spacer and a washer and then a, a socket with a hole through it. And what that's gonna allow me to do is pull in the new stud and tighten it properly so that it's fully seated into the hub. Now, I don't expect this to be the best tool. I've already noticed a little bit of impact wear on here. Uh, it never, doesn't say in the package if it is good for impact or not. I'll use a combination of ratchet and impact, but if it just survives for me to do the fronts, that's all I need to do. It was just like a $7 tool, so let's see how it does the rest of the job. Well, it took me more hours than I had planned, but I finally have the extended studs installed. Really the hardest part was getting the rotor off because what happened was the aluminum hat had seized with the hub and it took quite a bit of heat and banging around to get it off. But I've applied the anti-seize, it's good to go. I'm gonna get the wheel on here, button it up, then we can take it off to align it and get it one step closer to getting the new wheels on. All right, so I just got back from alignment. Car got a little bit wet, but it's fine. I'm gonna wash it anyway. Uh, I went to Firestone. I've had a lifetime alignment with them for 20 years. I'm sure they didn't bet on me keeping the car for my entire life, but uh, I guess it's gonna work out for my favor. I mean, they do all right, but they don't do any of these special settings like the camber and caster and whatnot. They really just do tow. And what I wanted though, is the fact that I'm gonna start doing my own alignment. I wanted a baseline. I wanted them to give me a printout. That way I could see where they left the settings and what settings were sort of something I need to fine tune. It also lets me know that I'm doing it right. So before we get the new wheels on, one more thing. Let's take a little walk through history and see some of the wheels I've had on the car over the past 20 years. So there you have it. It was a lot of work, but the wheels are finally on. I got a chance to take the car out for a quick test drive and the initial impressions of these tires, these RE71Rs, holy crap, do they have some stick to them. Far more grip than I expected. I did not find the limits. Um, I don't wanna do that on a public road, but next autocross, I'm gonna to try to push them, find out exactly where that grip lets off and their behavior. But I am really happy with their initial grip so far. There were some complaints of noise I find the noise only on certain types of pavement. Uh, there's this one road that's semi-fun on the way home. It really was noisy the whole time. It's almost like uh, uh, roller skates on top of concrete uh, or asphalt or something constantly. You get used to it. I don't think it was the end of the world, but it is what it is. Now, as far as my other wheels go, my old Sports Max, I am keeping them. Um, I've got them up on the rack up here. I I love the wheels, they'll always be with me. Um, I think they're one of my favorite wheels in the car. And of course, they still have pretty decent tires on them. And those tires have a higher heat cycle, so what they'll be good for is if I wanna go on a road trip and go find some roads to go carve, or maybe go hit the dragon or something. That's one reason I'll keep those around. Plus, I'll probably throw one in the trunk when I travel as a spare. So anyway, it was a long journey, but I'm happy with the results. Go follow us on Instagram at CMSGT4. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.